Children doing what children do best, playing together happily. But outside the comfort of their own home, these protests have punctuated their playtime. I felt like it wasn't a normal day. Like I felt like something was wrong. I felt like something like the school has changed because of the protest. Rohan and Isa's family have two generations of students who went to Anderton Park, the school at the centre of a row over LGBTQ education. Amjad remembers a time when the sound of anger wasn't constantly heard at the school gates. I mean, I was a student there maybe about 42, 43 years ago. Fantastic. But this opinion has changed in the recent months because he believes the school's equality lessons have missed the mark. Prior to what's happened in the school, not one case, I'm sure, has anybody ever questioned if there's two dads or two moms. I don't think anybody, everybody's gone with the flow. It's fine. But what's wrong with learning about two dads and two moms? Because I've, if you're four years old and you're coming home, you've got a dad and a mom. Four-year-old comes in and says, well, I've just been told there's two moms. Where's my second mommy? How do you explain that one? Oh. Nice. <laughs> backwards. Caught in the crossfire, Rohan. When I was told about it, it was my teacher and uh, he was, and then they were saying that um, that th these people were saying bad stuff and you should have just ignored them. And then when I looked there, I seen that they were wearing scarves and things. And I thought, oh, they look, I think they're Muslims. And then I asked my dad about it. Then I got a letter and he said, uh, and he was talking about LGBT. And I said, oh, I learned about that. That's bad. Um, then I told my dad. Rohan's parents say they've always enjoyed a close relationship with the school and its teachers. But that's until LGBTQ was addressed inside the classroom. And now, although there's little love lost between both camps, Amjid and Nahida say the rift has left them feeling disappointed. Yes. I've lost that connection with the school, yeah, that with is the true, teachers. Yeah. Uh, that's what I really feel. You know, I used to love going to school to pick my kids up. If you look at what's being used in the schools, it's stories that show that some families have two mummies and some families have two daddies. What's so wrong with that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. He's going to learn that in primary school, I mean, in a secondary school anyway. But I'm with the parents who, because the kids are younger there, like from the age of four, teaching them. They're still ch they're children. Well, let they're kids still be kids. kids. The whole chant, let yeah. kids be kids. If someone came and sat in front of you and told you that learning about Islam at the age of four was too much and not age appropriate, how would that make you feel? Uh, for me, learning about something, especially religion, you're learning about all, they're not specifically going to say to you, you're learning about Islam. I think it's a totally different extreme from religion to uh, LGBT learning. As the row has escalated, some have accused the protesters of being homophobic. So what is your definition of being homophobic? Being brown or having a different religious belief, I think first and foremost, we should not have it feels to be discriminated against. So for us then to discriminate against any community uh, would just, wouldn't sit right, would not sit right at all. When it comes to how much say teachers and parents have in the education of children, the ball is now in the government's court. But the ask from those to whom it matters most is simple. Yeah, I would like it to be so though and I want it all to calm down so there's nothing and it's just a normal school and I think the head teacher should listen to the parents of what they're saying. As we were preparing to leave, Amjad had one final thought he wanted to share with me. I personally love the LGBT community. I'm not going to speak on behalf of anybody else. All the interactions I've had in the last 20, 25 years have only been positive and long may they continue. They're very happy people. When they're happy, I'm happy. And I hope they don't take this as the big picture, oh, this is how it is. It's not. Many people love you.
many people wish you all the best. Well, Nithi joins us in the studio now. And Nithi, you can see the strength of their comments there. What's the school had to say to them? Bob, the school are very clear on why they have to teach all aspects of equality. Their answer is simple. We are living in a modern Britain and that's why we have to teach all aspects. But as you say, the parents did make some very strong comments and I put those comments to the school. Because I've, if you're four years old and you're coming home, you've got a dad and a mum. Four-year-old comes in and says, well, I've just been told there's two mums. Where's my second mummy? In, the, in British law, children can have two mummies and two daddies because that's legal. But there are many people in this country who are in a same-sex relationship and have children. When do they tell their children that they have a same-sex family? What age is that what appropriate? You know, what age is that appropriate to tell them? Because they know from the day that they're born. People might think that we have a group of children on a carpet and we stand at the front and we teach that these these are two mums, this is this, this is how they have children, this is the biology of it. We don't do it like that. Uh, it's woven into everything that we do. Being brown or having a different religious belief, I think first and foremost we should not have it feels to be discriminated against. So for us then to discriminate against any community uh, would just wouldn't sit right. Would not sit right at all. I'm not going to say whether I think this parent is homophobic. I think they're throughout the protests and throughout um, the things that have been going on in Birmingham. I think that there has been um, things that have been said, things that have been held up, signs that have been deemed homophobic. The, uh, the only thing that's really upset me is I've lost that connection with the school, yeah, with the teachers. It's awful that they feel that they can't come in and, and talk to us and it's awful that they feel that um, they can't come in and have banter with one of the teachers because we haven't changed. We're still the same people that we were three months ago and they're st still the same parents. Do you feel in hindsight more could have been done to engage the parents? We do engage with parents and we've never not engaged with parents. Parents might feel that they didn't know about this but we've never kept it from them. It's just a tiny part of what we do. Well, Anisia, obviously a very big topic. Six weeks of school holiday has just begun. Do you think that maybe there's a potential it might go away during that time? No, Hannah, this topic is unlikely to simmer down after the summer. In fact, 2020 will see relationships and sex education become very much compulsory part of the primary school curriculum. But while the debate does rage on nationally and at the local level, it's important to note that it is causing very deep fractures within these tight-knit communities. And specifically, these you know, we heard about the disappointment from parents and teachers over the lack of trust and the hope from both parties. What they've told me is that the division doesn't go beyond reconciliation. OK, let's hope so. Thank you very much, Nithya.